Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create online meetings by using zoom.us. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now I'm using the free version of Zoom, which gives me up to 100 participants per meeting and will still record my meeting and save it locally on my computer. So let's sign in. I'm going to use my Google account to sign in. Of course, you can also use your regular old email address and create a password to sign in as well. Now here in my account, you'll see I don't have any upcoming meetings scheduled. So let's go ahead and schedule one right now. We'll just call this one class with Mr. Burn for Mr. Burns comp sci students. Now, We'll schedule it for the future. We'll say it's gonna be Monday at 3 p.m. Now the duration, you can say it's one hour, maybe one hour, 15 minutes, one hour, 30 minutes, whatever you like. Now, one thing to note about Zoom's basic plan, which is what I'm using here, if you have more than three people in the meeting, you're limited at 40 minutes per meeting. If you have Less than that, you're good to go for as long as you want. Now, the free plan, again, lets you have up to 100 participants for up to those 40 minutes. Now, let's set our time zone. If you think you're going to do this more than once, you can set it as a recurring meeting. It's going to happen every week. Let's say it's going to happen every week until the end of April. Now you can set a meeting password. Depending on your audience, you may or may not need that. Let's turn the video on for the host and video on for participants so that both sides can see what's happening, can see each other. I like to leave the audio option as both as well so that students who are dialing in with their phone, maybe, maybe they have a weaker uh, Wi-Fi connection at home, weaker wireless signal at, um, at home, they might want to use their telephone rather than computer audio. Now the meeting options. I like to enable the waiting room and enable join before host so that my students don't think I've forgotten about the meeting if I haven't gotten there as early as they do. We all have those students who like to show up a little bit early. I also like to turn on mute participants upon entry. Make That way people don't accidentally broadcast their audio to the whole group when they don't need to. And I always have record the meeting automatically on the local computer turned on. So let's save that. Now we have a join URL. Just share that link with the people you want to join your meeting. You can also click the copy the invitation and that will give you options in addition to the link for calling in on your phone. You see there the one tap mobile or by location. You copy that and send it out to people that need it. Now, when you're ready to start your meeting, you can click start this meeting right here on this page. Or if you click on your meetings, you can see here the next meeting coming up is March 9th. Now I can start it early, I'll start it right now. I have the zoom.us desktop client installed. It's available for Mac and for Windows. We'll say I'm gonna join with the computer audio. Now, in this case, because I already have my webcam turned on for this video, I'm not able to also turn on the webcam in zoom.us. You can only use your webcam for one thing at a time. You can see down here, I can screen share. Again, because I'm already screen sharing with a different application for this video, that won't actually launch, but that's where you'd find it. You'll see up here, my meeting is automatically being recorded. And when I'm done, I can hit end meeting. And before I end this meeting, let me show you a handy little tool here. If, your student, if you've started the meeting and your students need the invitation again, just click the invite button and I will pull up your email service and you can copy the 
URL for your meeting. And another handy little thing here, you can click on the reactions and this could be a good way to just do those quick little check-ins with your, with your students to say, hey, are you with me? Did you get that part? Give me a thumbs up if you do. And there it is. Now, when you're done with that meeting, just hit end meeting, or end it for all. And in this case, my meeting failed to convert, but I can go back later and look at that in the meetings in zoom.us and convert it from there. So hopefully that was a helpful overview of how to use zoom.us. Now again, because I was using my screencasting tool while also trying to run the webinar, it didn't record exactly as it would on your screen if you were not also running a screencasting program at the same time. Zoom.us is a tool I've been using for recording meetings, for creating podcasts for quite a while now. It's very easy to use and can be a great way to offer some instruction remotely. Check that out at zoom.us. As always, for more tips and tricks and tutorials like this, check out practicaledtech.com or subscribe to